here we are. About eight months later, and the VDT is in. We've been to the dyno now multiple times, and I believe we've proven out our concept. So way back when, we started with a non-VVT-18 and really had the question of, is the VVT worth doing upgrades to as an NA, naturally aspirated engine? Uh, there's obviously Quinn out there. He didn't do it on the VVT, but he did it on another engine. He's got an awesome build. If you haven't seen it, definitely check out his ITB-18 build. We were thinking, can we do something similar to that on a budget and how close can we get to his results with the VVT? You know, is there like really a difference? And I believe what we've done here is prove out the concept that the VVT A makes a lot of torque. It's a really torquey engine. And with the 80 20 rule, you know, for 20% of the cost, you can get 80% of the way there. I think you can with this. Um, on our last trip to Rick's Dino, we did a whole new intake setup. We have the Skunk 2 intake manifold, the Skunk 2 throttle body, and this really cool routed intake uh, pulling cold air from the front bumper. That netted us another 15 wheel horsepower. I would have never expected that much out of just a manifold for the intake, especially NA. And almost more importantly, it netted us another 1200 RPM of usable power. Really, this engine originally, for the first time we went there, really started losing power around 5,800 RPM, and now it will pull all the way up to 72, maybe even a little more, but we kept it conservative and ended right around 7,200 because we will be going back to the track and whatnot, but it pulls hard all the way up there. Now, in total, we are making 150 wheel horsepower on 93. We didn't tune for corn and go E85. I wish we had, but we just didn't have time. So there's a chance that we can make even more because we saw an increase of five wheel horsepower on our other tune before the intake. So really, what does that translate to? I don't know on a, on a uh, dyno jet. This was done on the Land and Sea, which is equivalent to more of like a Mustang dyno. So maybe somewhere around 170, 175 on a dyno jet. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe fuck yourself. But what I will say about this is at 150 wheel, I can guarantee you we're making 180 horsepower at the flywheel, which is what my goal was. My goal was to make 100 horsepower per liter and we did it NA. So my job's done here now. <laughs> What do I think about Dylan's car? It really does feel like a detuned K series. Car band is super linear. Uh, it used to peak out at like 5,800 RPM, but now it just pulls and pulls and pulls. It is very peppy, and like a lot of people say that about all the autos that like, oh, it's not fast, but it's peppy. Yeah, this is peppy. Those are like just you know. Oh, it feels fast for 100 horsepower. Okay. Uh, it's a 10 pound flywheel. So that, along with, you know, all the power stuff we've done to it, it revs up, like, super quick. Not like Formula One quick, but, you know. All right, I'll give you guys a third gear pull here. Car in its current setup for learning how to drive on track. 
I always look forward to driving this car, even though it's not as fast as mine. It's easy to drive, it's comfortable. And then, you know, you don't even have to flick a switch. I can drive this two hours to find you. Literally drive from the road on the track, slap the helmet on, and beat on it for probably eight hours, and drive home. And the car won't care. And I think that's really where these cars, this type of build, will prove itself. Definitely not as capable as the NC for dual duty, but NA Miata dual duty. So what is next? Well, turbo. It's turbo time. I'm not gonna be trying to keep up with Stefan. That's not gonna happen. Stefan's got displacement and reliability and beefy stuff on his side. The idea with this is to maintain a dual purpose car. And that's really what we've done here. You know, it started out, it was really more just like a stalker with some stuff on it. And now it looks the part it has the power of the part, and we're going to make it even more so with a turbo. Shoot for 230 to 250, maybe have two different tunes, a street tune at 250-ish, maybe, and a track tune more around like 230. So stay tuned. That's what this winner and this car is going to be about. We are doing turbos. There's a bunch of other stuff that I want to do to this thing. I want to do some chassis rigidity. We've got some interior stuff to deal with, but... This is us setting up for winter build season, season two. So if you're curious on how to turbo a car or just want to see some more cool content, subscribe down below for that. Um, it's probably not going to start for a little while. We're probably not going to get started on our build season until November, December time. But stay tuned because we've got some cool stuff coming this winter.